so i believe that one should never lose confidence never lose hope when one faces an adversity or challenge uh, you know this is what you know i think resilience is all about uh, it's our ability to stay in, stay calm and accept failures as learning lessons and thus you know to bounce back with a fierce determination Welcome to the Anaitha Speaker Series presented by Carnegie India, where we celebrate stirring stories of empowerment, struggle, and success from women professionals in different fields across the globe, with an aim to inspire young professionals. I am Meha Shah, Executive Assistant to Director and Research Assistant at Carnegie India, and today I'll be speaking to Garima Aftar, an Indian athlete. TEDx speaker and rally driver. She's the first female professional driver for Mercedes-Benz Lux Drive. Karima is one of the few female rally drivers to have participated in almost all of India's major competitive rallies, including the Indian National Rally Championship, the Raid the Himalaya, Desert Storm, the Mughal Rally, and many other autocrosses and speed sprints. As a social media influencer, she won gold at ET Brand Equity Influencer Marketing Awards 2022. She has also won many awards for her work, including the Asian Achievement Award for Outstanding Work in Extreme Rallying, Flow Delhi Women Leadership Award 2021, the Kale Gaurav Award 2021, and the Peak Like Women Inspire Award 2022. We are privileged to have Garima with us today. Garima, welcome to the Anaita Speaker Series. Thank you so much. It's a privilege for me to be here. Thank you. It's so nice to have you here with us today as well. There's so much we want to know from you, so I'll jump right in. Um, Karima, you've led a really unique and interesting life. Could you tell us about what your life journey has been like? Specifically, what circumstances led you to move on from working in the corporate sector to becoming a professional rally driver? Uh, see, my journey began in a small, sleepy town of Bareilly. Uh, from a young age, um, I had a great fascination for driving and my father, he took notice of that and he, uh, he too wanted me to uh, become independent and strong and so he taught me how to drive and I was just 14 years old. So at that time, it was um, you know, all about me flaunting my driving skills to my friends and feeling really great about it. Um, I was a simple small town girl, you know, with my own dreams of what life should be. I, I wanted to be independent and I wanted to do something extraordinary with my life. But my dad, when he was teaching me how to drive, neither him nor I could ever imagine, you know, in our wildest dreams that there was even a remotest possibility of me, possibility of me getting into motorsports and making a career off, out of it, you know, it was just out of question. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, against my wishes, I was made to marry when I was just 18. And then motherhood happened at 20. And my life took a course which I had never planned for. Uh, by the time I was 30, I had experienced a huge setback in my personal life. At that point, I experienced the lowest of the lows, you know, and I felt uh, I had reached the cross, crossroads of my life. I had no worthwhile personal degree or qualification. I had uh, no identity left and I felt completely useless, you know, like no worthwhile role to play in society. Everything looked, you know, dark and gloomy, but there was one thing that stood strong with me like a rock. And that was my conviction, you know, uh, my conviction to create my own identity, to create my own name, to feel more worthwhile and feel, you know, good about myself. And I was fueled by this intense desire to lead a more meaningful life. Now, when I look back, 
I also realize that you know I have a huge appetite to take risks and I feel that had I not made those tough and challenging decisions at that point in my life I would not have achieved or reached where I am today I think uh, we all at some point of our lives we face a dilemma uh, which is you know either to choose a path which is challenging difficult and full of risks or you know stay within our comfort zone and carry on with our lives however the payoffs of stepping out of a comfort zone definitely can be great you know we just have to trust our instincts and we have to you know take the decision wisely i went uh, for my first rally just by chance you know for fun without realizing that it will become ultimately my calling and career uh but it wasn't this simple as it uh, as it all may seem like i was over 30 you know and when you're over 30 uh you're planning your retirement in any sport uh today's champions if you see they start very early on you know much before their teens and by the time they're 30 they have done and seen it all and here i was I had decided that I will take up motor sports as a career so late in my life. At that time I remember that my family and friends did not take me seriously and out of their concern for me they advised me against it. You know they argued that I will end up being disappointed as you know motor sports is a is a risky sport and it is a tough sport and I was neither trained I was not physically tough and above all I was on the wrong side of the age curve so besides that you know motor sport also was dominated by men and it required not just physical and mental strength but also a solid financial support and it was also a completely uncharted territory for me so i had lots of doubts and apprehensions uh you know there were so many things against uh you know me getting into motor sports but i was also very very determined since then the journey may have been grueling but there has uh, has been no looking back i was a late starter but then one is never uh, too late to start um as i mentioned earlier that you know very early on in my life i had faced huge personal challenges after uh, i i took the decision to move out of the marriage um the initial years you know were very tough and you know they were full of uncertainty but um i refused to give up and i i slowly found my feet and got into a full time corporate job slowly life uh, slowly and steadily you know um life became better uh job was financially rewarding and it gave me stability so i w- i was also fully dedicated and you know i was very committed to the job i did well and i gradually climbed the uh, corporate la- ladder i and i ended up I became the corporate vice vice president of my company. During this time, I got introduced to the world of motor sports. Initially, I would pursue, uh, you know, my newfound passion during weekends and holidays. But I don't know how, you know, my casual interaction with motor sports became a full-fledged love affair. The problem was that because I was in, you know, in a full-time job. you know i was not able to give enough time to train and you know participate in events and i felt there was a huge potential for me you know to excel in the, in this field of motor sports so once again i was faced with a very difficult choice you know which which had it, its own risks um the the choice whether i should you know pursue motor sports or uh, you know stay uh, in my full time job um you know but i have realized that we really tend to hold ourselves back most of us you know we know what we want what we dream dream about and yet we end up spending all of our time and energy you know arguing what uh, arguing against it you know against what we want we don't think you know we are good enough we try to bring ourselves down we beat ourselves up we will cheer for others you know but we will we won't do it for ourselves you know it's so easy to see and advise somebody else what that person should do and uh, you know it's very easy to support and cheer somebody else we all do that uh, yeah 
but you know we we cheer for our favorite sports team we follow our favorite um, author you know or um a, a, a role model we support everyone else around us but we do not know how to do it for ourselves so i decided to give myself a chance and not doubt my capabilities and i decided to act towards my dreams and aspirations no matter how difficult or impossible they seem to appear so if i wanted to seriously pursue motor sports then i will have to take a plunge a huge risk of quitting my safe and secured and stable job and get into a field where there was no guarantee of success and which was full of uncertainty we all have this fear of unknown you know so but uh but i gathered the courage to go beyond my comfort zone and um, i ended up quitting my secure job i trusted my instincts and uh, today i am really proud of myself that i could gather the courage to take this risk and make a name for myself in my chosen field that's really inspiring thank you so much for sharing the the your life story with us um just based on what you said um as you said you've experienced some really key pivotal moments in your life where you made a risky almost life changing decision to stay true to yourself and to your passions what advice would you give to your younger self or to women going through similar moments in their lives uh see uh, i've realized that um, i have a huge appetite to take risks and i feel that uh, had i not made those tough uh, and challenging decisions at that point in my life i would not have achieved or reached where i am today so uh, i think we all at some point in our lives we face a dilemma to you know to either choose a path which is difficult and uh, full of risks or stay within a comfort zone and carry on with the lives as it is um and uh, so i think i would like to tell um you know women out there that you know you must step out of your comfort zone and trust your inst- instincts and have faith in your capabilities and potential no oh, thank you that's actually so inspiring to hear and you you uh, the way that you uh, made such a risky choice just a little bit about rally racing in general um it's not often that you hear about a female rally driver why is rally driving such a male dominated sport you're a trail blazer for women in this field have you been seeing more women coming up as rally drivers yes so there has uh... you know a lot of women uh, you know are getting into the sport now initially i remember when i had started rallying there were just a handful of women in fact i remember you know when i participated one of the rallies you know out of 150 participants i was the only female driver you know this is like long time back in in, in one of the desert storm challenges that i had participated in so uh, yeah and and initially uh, you know, there i there were no mentors uh, because there were hardly any women out there but now um, uh, you know it i mean you can see a lot of women getting into the sport and there are a lot of um, uh, support also now the government is also uh, is supporting you know has uh, motor sport has been recognized as a sport also um i would like to know about what are some of the learnings that you've acquired from competing in such a male dominated field you were also in the corporate sector for a while so have the challenges and the learnings been similar in in some ways or have they been totally different for you between the two sectors uh yeah so um yeah so one of the important uh, things that i you know uh do is constantly upskill myself uh another thing that i you know i have i follow which i is self discipline and when when you competing with men out there in a male dominated sport so it's also important to uh you know to not consider yourself any less than others but the most important thing is to constantly upskill yourself you you must learn and 
you know understand uh, uh, the nuances of the sport and become better at your you know game and at your um, craft so besides that you know to have good confidence um, in your own self so i've learned that the quality of our internal dialogue you know controls our performance in any field and area of our lives and this is one of the most important lessons that i've you know learned over the years to control our internal dialogue and i think this is applicable to any field and facet of life you know practicing thought awareness which is how we talk to ourselves you know on a daily basis or when something goes wrong so i believe that one should never lose confidence never lose hope when one faces an adversity or challenge uh, you know this is what you know i think resilience is all about uh, it's our ability to stay in, stay calm and accept failures as learning lessons and thus you know to bounce back with a fierce determination another thing that i have learned in my journey is that we must not doubt our capabilities we must learn to you know also cheer for ourselves rather than just for others you know it's so easy to see and support somebody else it's so easy to cheer for somebody else but we must learn to cheer uh, you know uh, um, uh, cheer ourselves and it is important to have faith in our capabilities and to give chance to ourselves and thus i think positive uh, self talk also helps it helps us to boost our confidence and self belief oh thank you for the thoughtful for your thoughtful answer it's actually so true that we are the first ones to cheer for somebody else and the last ones to cheer for ourselves um that's something to think about um um so um you wear so many hats even beyond rally racing you are an automotive journalist you are a model social media influencer also a motivational speaker i'm very curious to know what a usual work day looks like for you um and also what drives you to do so many things uh, is there a particular profession that you have the most affinity towards that you love the most yes i am a rally driver and um, since i'm into extreme rallying i love cars and i love driving them so uh, since i've been into motor sports um, you know i love um, driving super cars fast cars uh, and luxury cars um, so yeah so you know creating content around super cars i really enjoy that because i you know i i love technology and uh, also so i i have the, the content that i've been creating so i have been doing the editing uh, of the videos myself uh, that i you know put up on my social media so i really enjoy uh, that side of creativity as well so yes and and the thing that drives me to do so many things is uh, is i think it's because of my growth mindset you know i think i am you know constantly thinking how i can become a better person what new skills that i can develop or you know how i can great the skills that i already have uh, how how i can at least you know become better every day by just 1% you know that 1% growth every day how can that happen you know what new thing that i can learn today so i think this attitude uh, this growth mindset this attitude it keeps me you know really driven it keeps me motivated no that's really nice to hear also i've also had a really great time going through your instagram and all the contents that you post i've learned so much about cars just just going through your instagram so uh, really appreciate all the content that you put out and it's so nice to see you driving all these really fancy cars um yeah so um my um so um you've talked about how car you love cars and you've made sort of your passion um your profession and which is like a dream for many um and which was uh, I, which was not the case it's uh, it's uh, you were in the corporate sector before so um i'm just curious to know um do you think that it's important to be passionate about the job that you do or or could your job just be you know a, just a way to earn a living no no i think it's so important if uh, you know if you know i think that the, that's the best thing to happen if your passion becomes your work then each and every you know moment of that work it's ne it never feels like work it's like you know it's it's more of joy and uh, 
and then I think um, the output and the the whole synergy changes. So definitely, one should love, uh, one should try and invest uh, our time and energy in our passion and try to cultivate it and hone it so that it you know it can reap uh, financial rewards as well. Yeah, I was just all sort of dreaming about um, having a sort of similar profession, I think, just loving what you do on the day to day. So it's really inspiring to hear the same from you. You've received various awards and accolades for your professional life. But there's one particular award that you've received for your personal life as well. The Radio 194.3 FM Super Mom Award. What was it like uh, receiving such an award that's very different from your professional accomplishments? See, I think, so So life, um, if led in balance, it gives a lot of peace and satisfaction. And, uh, it just, you know, so, um, you know, being a super mom feels really amazing. Uh, you know, I have a daughter. I have a very, uh, I have a wonderful daughter. And to see my daughter grow into a beautiful and a, you know, kind-hearted person, you know, it gives me immense pleasure and joy. Uh, it gives me immense satisfaction that you know I've been able to handle and manage my time, my duty, duties and responsibilities towards my daughter in a you know in a balanced and a satisfactory manner. So yeah, so uh, getting this kind of a you know achievement uh, uh, is definitely very rewarding for me I mean, as a mom. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm curious to know. What are the role models that you look up to and why? Um, see, I have a lot of role models, not just one. Uh, in fact, uh, I derive my regular dose of motivation uh, from listening to podcasts and you know watching motivational videos of Oprah Winfrey, Sister Shivani, Sadhguru, Jay Shetty, Kobe Bryant many more I mean so so this is uh, you know that's my morning routine in fact you know I get up in the morning and I just put on some motivation video I listen to a lot of TED, TEDx talks also uh, so yeah this is what really keeps me going it helps me to have a positive start to my day uh, so yeah so I have a lot of role models in fact not just one and I derive uh, some you know piece I, I pick up a lot of advice from you know various areas and various life aspects from various uh, people who have who are who are trail uh, trailblazers and achievers in their own lives what can we do to encourage women to uh, to pursue uh, motor sports uh, to encourage more women participation in uh, rally racing and also other motor sports in general uh, I think, uh, you know, if women get uh, good backing from the sponsors, you know, because uh, rally racing and motorsports is, is a very expensive sport. It requires a lot of financial uh, support and uh, that's, and, and it's like, you know, uh, besides the car, besides make, you know, preparing a rally car, you require rally gear, you have to enter, to participate in the, the event, you require to pay the entry fees and th there's much more, you know, uh, servicing of the car and, you know, uh, which, which so a lot of finances and um, uh, money gets spent, uh, you know, in participating in a rally. Uh, so if, if women out there uh, get some backing from the sponsors, if there are some uh, really amazing uh, some some training programs uh, for them where they can upskill themselves and you know learn and feel more confident, uh, you know driving uh, and breaking the barriers, uh, you know of being called a bad, uh, you know like women. There's a stereotype that women are not not good drivers. So uh, so if they upskill themselves, train better and um, you know kind of change the stereotype by proving themselves on the track so uh, i think if they if there are some training programs and training schools and all uh, where uh, uh, you know 
it's it's um, inculcated in the in the curriculum maybe in colleges and uh, schools if it's uh, you know some module related to motor sports and uh, you know is related is is inculcated in the curriculum that that can be really helpful and infrastructure basically um, creating a better infrastructure for women participation uh, but we would really love to see more women in that in in such sports uh, it's really inspiring um so one last question for you before we wrap up um you seem to be doing so many exciting uh, fun things at the moment so what does the future hold for you um uh, as i mentioned earlier I, i think i have a growth mindset you know i'm i can continuously work towards becoming a you know better person every day i keep exploring what new skills uh, that i can develop and how i can upgrade my skills that i already have uh, so currently um, i'm working on launching my own audio and video podcast it's completely a new thing for me and i have no previous experience of it so it's been a great learning you know i mean it's been uh, you know creating a podcast and you know it's been hugely demanding of my time but i'm you know full on into it and i'm totally committed uh, to making it big and for me the journey of creating and developing the podcast um, has been uh, really amazing and it's I, i think the journey is equally important than the than just the outcome i try to find joy in my in in, in that rather than just the des- destination and uh, there have been a lot of teething troubles and challenges Uh, and the final product may not turn out to be the best in the world as of now but i'm fully committed and i have uh, you know complete uh, sincerity towards the process so i'm sure i you know i will persevere to making it one of the best in the world and i'm sure that gradually i'll get there really looking forward to listening to your podcast it sounds really exciting um thank you so much karima for sharing your experiences and insights with us it was so interesting to know more about your journey and your adventures till now to our audience i hope you had a great time listening to this episode we will be back with a new speaker soon do subscribe to kanigi india's youtube channel for viewing similar content thank you